G'day everyone. Welcome back to the channel. The new 1700 update is out today. And I'll give you one guess what it's all about. It starts with K and it ends with Annans. That's right. This is the Cannons and Pirates update, which my son wanted me to mention the Pirates. Uh, a little bit more on that later. Uh, but the major update is, of course, that I've been able to introduce Cannons. It's only for sieges at this point, not for field battles but I am working on that as well. A um, few other major updates. I've added the Dutch culture, including a troop tree and some new settlements. Um, the first mercenary clans or minor clans um, for the mod, which is where the pirates come in. Uh, and the last thing is a few more mercenary units, which will cover off as well. So exciting update, lots to cover off. Let's get into it. So I just want to explain um, what I've done and kind of how I got here. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, someone asked me how long until we get cannons. And my answer was a couple of months. That's basically IT developer speak for, I have no idea how to do this and it may never come. <laughs> but then I, uh, then I went back and watched some of the, the Lesser Scholar videos and I, I thought to myself, Maybe this can be as simple as replacing the existing siege assets with cannons um, and then making some tweaks to animations and things like that. And that's actually exactly what I've been able to do. I found some great um, cannon models online um, and I've been able to replace the existing siege assets with those. I then took the, um, the Canon firing animations and sound effects from the Abus gun and added those to the cannons as well and now uh, and here we are so I don't want to don't want to make it sound easy um, I've spent literally all that all those last three weeks getting these things to a to an operating level um, but it's pretty good so far you know there's there's lots left to go but I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out so far so yeah, it's just siege weapons at this time. I'm, I'm, I am working on field battles, um, but there's quite a lot more to get that working and, and get it operating the way I want. So yeah, this is, a, this is a, a first start, but it's a good first start, I think. So I've kept the existing siege framework of the, the ballista, the catapult and the trebuchet. Uh, but I've uh, changed the assets, changed how they fire, and renamed them. So we've got the uh, the six pound cannon replacing the ballista. We can see that's good against uh, structures and units. We've got the twelve pound cannon replacing the catapult. That's good against um, siege, enemy units, and walls. So it's the all rounder. Uh, and then we've got the thirty six pound cannon, which replaces the trebuchet. And you can see this says um, takes time to build, but will turn enemy defenses to rubble. So only good for taking out walls essentially um, so we'll just um, we'll just let our bombard take place here you can see shooting projectiles similar to what they did before um, this this part of it you know doesn't really change that much uh, but yeah it's cool to see the cannons doing their thing Okay, so we'll start off with the six pound cannon. And you can see this one by the darker brass barrel on it. This one's good because uh, it fires really quickly and you don't need any other units to reload it. When it drops down like this, um, that's the, the, the user reloading it. So you can see it fires really fast um, and the projectile moves quickly. I need to tweak the damage. Um, it's, it's really weak against structures at the moment for some reason. But if you fire it directly into units, you will absolutely rip them apart. So um, that one's pretty fun, pretty easy to use. They, they do get destroyed easily, though. If, a, if an enemy cannon hits it, it only takes a couple of hits. So let's take a look at the 36-pounder now. Uh, this is the gun on the left. You can tell these apart uh, because they're larger, uh, but they've also got those two wooden beams at the back, whereas the, the 6 and the 12 only have one. Uh, this floating thing above my head is the targeting reticle, so that's how you can see how far you're going to fire. And yeah, you basically just point and shoot. Um, like I said um, before, you know, it's it's similar to the trebuchet. It's really only good for taking out 
enemy walls um, during the campaign scenes, during the bombard. Um, not that effective once you're in the actual scene scene. For that, you want the uh, the 6-pounder and the 12-pounder. Okay, so let's take a look at the 12-pounder now, since it's the gun on the right. Uh, I initially had this configured for multiple projectiles, and I'll, I'll show you this again. You can see it actually fires four flaming shots, which, even though they look cool, um, it's not really, not really very realistic. And um, when you have four... 12 pounders on each side that's up to 36 projectiles in the air um, and it just does too much damage um, particularly for the defenders you know you're just wiping out those attacking armies with with even more ease and um, you probably all gathered now I, I really like how difficult this mod is and I want to I want to maintain that so I have changed it back to a, a single projectile for now there was one other problem with this, and that is that the AI had a habit of firing them directly into the ground or into um, into structures in front of them. So, and, I, and actually, I'll show you this on the defensive side um, as well. If we take a look at um, to take a look at our French army here, they're firing these directly into the ground and uh, and killing themselves. So, in order to fix this, what I've actually had to do is. Um, remove the cannon animation and move it back to uh, the manganel uh, animation just for the the 12 pound gun so we'll take a look at how it is set now we've got the manganel animation the single projectile and um, no cannon sound effect that's not ideal but it was literally game breaking the defensive ai could not use them at all so this is how it's going to have to be for now until i figure out a better solution so the next big update is the addition of the dutch culture and dutch troop tree um, so we can see we're starting here just outside amsterdam i've added the hague and amersfoort as the bound settlements and if we jump into Amsterdam, um, even though it looks like a, a castle prefab, it's it's a town. Uh, I've just done that to, to save space. Um, I also need to update this to uh, British ownership because it's owned by William III. Um, and uh, he's which castle will remain with the Spanish. Uh, but this territory here is essentially the Netherlands um, and all has Dutch culture, uh, allowing you to recruit a full troop tree. Uh, if we have a look at the troops, um, same as all the rest in Western Europe, same format, um, and that'll expand with field cannons when I get those done. Um, but these guys are a tier higher as well. Uh, and the reason I've done that is because the Dutch, you know, often fought as mercenaries, fought all over Europe, um, and you can only recruit them in one small area. So it makes sense that they would be uh, be a higher tier of troop. Um Next thing is uh, another new settlement over in Hungary. So I've added uh, added Debrecen, and I've just given it the two of the existing settlements with um, Sosnok and, and Karul. The reason I've added this in is because when I was playing in, in Eastern Europe recently, I noticed this enormous area um, that has no town in it. <laughs> Um, which was quite quite annoying when you need to offload um, loot and prisoners and things like that. Um, and I think I might actually add another one in Romania as well. This area uh, in the middle here is quite empty. I can probably add in Cluj, I think, as a as a new town as well. Um, the last thing with the Brecon here as well is um, I've fixed a little bug with the uh, with the Rakosi clan who owns it. Um, their, their lovely looking banner <laughs> wasn't showing up and I think I had them set up in, um, as a duplicate somewhere else. So, so that's fixed up now and we've got a, got a Hungarian owner for our new Hungarian town. Okay, so moving on to the last update now, our first minor clans for the mod, which is our pirate cruise. So why pirate cruise, you might be wondering. Let me, uh, let me explain. So one of my favorite TV shows is Black Sails. And if you haven't seen it, it's a, uh, a highly rated action-adventure drama about the golden age of piracy, um, which is roughly 1650 to 1730, so well within our time frame. And Black Sails itself is actually a, uh, a prequel to the book Treasure Island, which it is also about the golden age of piracy. 
Now, what a lot of people probably do not realize is that many of the characters, in fact, most in the show and the book, were real people. They were pirates uh, operating out of the Caribbean. Now, the, the background to piracy is that um, the, the word itself actually comes from privateer. And these crews were uh, essentially mercenaries hired by the British government um, to harass Spanish shipping. Um, except the problem was that when they ran out of Spanish ships to, uh, to, to plunder, they started attacking British ships as well. <laughs> Hence, they became pirates. Um, and what I, what I realized was because these guys exist in our time frame, because they're English and because they're mercenaries, they are a perfect fit for our, uh, our mercenary crews. I guess we have to stretch the truth a little bit and pretend that, uh, you know, they're, they're back home visiting, uh, visiting friends and family in Europe, um, but yeah, they, they definitely existed at the time. Um, so they, they're a great fit for, uh, for our mercenary clans. So let's take a look at our crews. Uh, the Lark crew, first of all. The Lark is Charles Vane's first ship uh, before he, he renamed it to the Ranger. Uh, so this is what Charles looks like. And then move on to his, uh, his first mate, who was Jack Rackham, otherwise known as Calico Jack. Uh, Jack's lover, Anne Bonny, who's the most famous female pirate in history. And then uh, Edward England, who, despite his name, is actually Irish. Go figure. Um, now, I've made them outlaws of Great Britain, so they're automatically at war. Uh, and I think they always will be. I'll double check. Moving on to the Ranger crew then. So Benjamin Hornigold, uh, one of the, the first pirates and who was involved in setting up the, the Pirate Republic in Nassau, uh, modern day capital of the Bahamas. So we've got Benjamin Hornigold uh, and then uh, we've also got in his crew, we've got Samuel Bellamy, who was the richest pirate in history. Uh, we then got John Howell. John Howell was actually a... Uh, a doctor who was captured by Hornigold, uh, and then he was later released, and he had such a bad time on other crews, he asked Hornigold if he could come back. So even though he was a doctor, he, uh, he quite liked the pirate life, it seemed. Uh, and then the last one we've got, probably the most famous pirate in history, is uh, Edward Teach, otherwise known as Blackbeard. So there you go, there's our two mercenary clans. Uh, it'll all be a bit of fun. We'll take a look at them in game here. Here's Charles, and uh, we'll take another look as well at uh, at Anne Bonny. This time with the uh, the famous hat from the show. Uh, the other thing we'll take a look at quickly is the um, is the crews. So these are the three mercenary units. Uh, the Powder Monkey here is actually a real a real thing. That was the the most junior rank. They were the ones who brought the the powder to the gunners. Um, we then got the gunners themselves. Uh, and finally, the boatswain. The boatswain was the first level of officer who looks after the crews. Now, all of these are pistol units, um, but you'll notice the, the tiers, they're all four, five, six. So all high tier units um, and should be pretty, pretty deadly if you run into them. Okay, so moving on to the last update. We're over in Morocco here, and uh, we've got some new mercenary units, the, uh, the Black Guard. So the Black Guard were African slaves who were used as the royal guards for the Moroccan or the Alawi royal family. Um, but they also formed, you know, I guess the elite force as well. So we've got, uh, we've got all, all gunpowder units. We've got two muskets, uh, a rifle and then a mounted pistol unit, so I guess the equivalent of a Dragoon. Um, and they're all high tier. So again, all tiers 4, 5, 6. They're only available in one place, uh, but these should be some of the strongest units in the game if you, can, uh, if you can get a hold of them. So that's it for our Cannons and Pirates update. Should be live now on Steam and Nexus. Uh, just note that... Uh, this time both the core files and the assets are updated, so you'll need to download the new assets uh, as well. Unfortunately, this one's not save game compatible as well because of the new settlements, um, but there's a lot of new features and things to take advantage of, so definitely worth updating. Um, so that's it. Leave your feedback in the comments uh, or on Discord as usual. 
and uh, I'll see you next time.